so organizational commitment so we know that organization commitment means sometimes we can say this is something attachment to the employer sometimes we can say as attachment to the organization right so uh, there are uh, now three kind of a commitment the first one is affective commitments affections is related to the attitude and feeling emotional attachment to the organization and identification with that organization for example that you are working in one organization where you are recognized only because of this this is this is that your feeling you feel comfortable over there right and involvement in the organization as well that is affective commitment in this case what happened uh, if the affective commitment is higher then there will be a lower turnover means employee turnover employees will leave this organization <laughs> very low rate right so they are not going to leave this organization only because of this commitment that person will not leave very soon then higher motivation and organizational citizenship second type of uh, commitment is continuance commitment it means willingness to continue working in the same organization and cost that cost employee associate with the leaving an organization what is the meaning of this it means if in an organization if organization in the organization one employee is going to leave that organization right then that that person is considering if i'm going to leave it i may not be having the same kind of job same kind of a repetition in another organization so that's why i i want to continue in this organization for long period of time for example employees feel the need to stay with the organization because their salary and fringe benefits won't improve if they move to another organization it means they have attachment with the organization no doubt but that attachment is known as calculative attachment and leaving is so difficult due to maybe two reason the one may be the due to the social and economic loss second lack of alternative employment so that is also a commitment so in this case also there will be lower turnover and performance will be good and organizational citizenship definitely there will be cooperate cooperations and cooperativeness normative commitment is a sense of a responsibility sometimes some employees say this is my responsibility maybe towards the employer and maybe towards the company maybe towards the environment maybe towards the society only because of that that i want to stay in this organization that is a different sense in their mind they felt obligation and moral duty to the organization employ loyalty and moral connection with the organization which applies the norms of reciprocity means the practice of exchanging things with others for a mutual benefit so in this case moral duty is the right things to do that is the normative commitment indebted obligation i don't want to fail my peers boss or company if this kind of feeling is there in the mind of any employee so that is also a kind of a commitment but that is known as normative commitment so how to build affective commitment like related to the feelings and attitude justice and sport if there is a justice and sport in the organization the feeling the employee will feel better sport organized organizational justice and employee well-being shared values employee believe their values are congruent means a harmonious or harmony with the forms of values trust positive expectation towards another people in situations involving the risk and employee trust management when management trust employees organizational comprehension <coughs> how well employee understand the organization and need a clear mental model of organization to identify with it employee involvement engagement 
psychological ownership of and social identi identity with the company so in this way that organization built effective communication amongst their employees if we talk about what is stress it's adaptive response to situation perceived as challenging or threatening to well-being prepare us to adapt to hostile environment conditions that is the stress for example heart rate increases muscle tighten then <coughs> breathing speed up body releases adrenaline which is kind of uh, a chemical when you are scared and stressed suddenly adrenaline is uh, quickly sent into your body and you feel so stressed uterus versus distress <clears throat> Uterus, a positive stress, this is a kind of a positive stress, is related to pleasant situation or occurrences. Here is the list of the stressors that typically produces the positive experiences. Some, some stresses are positive, some stresses are negative. So some level of stress is required and necessary, which motivate people to achieve goals and change their environment and they succeed in challenges for example marriage and starting a new job getting married this sometimes people get stressed that that for the long period of time that we will live together this is the stress mm -hmm. staying staying or starting a new job what kind of environment will be there i don't know about the employers right and uh, the peers and the colleagues the new colleagues new people how like whether they will be bullying me like so some some kind of maybe due to diversity they will not be able to understand my language anything giving a presentation and a receiving award buying a home is also a kind of stress but that is a positive stress in which that you achieve something visiting new places this new place that you want to explore it's little bit stress is there that how i will be able to do cop up getting a promoted at work if you're going to get promoted definitely responsibility will also <coughs> going up increase and giving birth this is also a stressful situation so your trust and <coughs> distress so distress is extremely uh, sorrow and painful an anxiety that comes Distress can occur when person feels unable to cope or out of their depth. For example, if the person has not studied for the forthcoming exam, they may be anxious or panicked. GAS is a general adaptation syndrome that describes a physiological changes your body goes through as it responds to stress when there is a stress there is a changes in your body physiological change so these changes occur in some stages step by step not quickly the first is the alarm reaction also called fight or flight it's a fight you fight with that with the what the problem is or just you just you, you run away means flight so threats or challenges activities that physiological stress responses it decreases decreased energy and coping effectiveness this is an alarm reaction dilated peoples you can see here rapid breathing pale or flushed skin increased heart rate trembling and heightened sense so according to one of the writer cell 
most of the symptoms of alarm response stages disappear or are reversed in the next stage that is the resistance then reappear in the final stage that is exhaustion so this is the stage by stage from the alarm stage if it is the disappeared is okay if it's not going to disappear it means the still that you have some tension is going to the next stage that stage is known as resistance phase the second stage <coughs> in which the body uh, body recovers now this is the recovery stage body is going to recover when the body tries to repair itself after the initial shock of stress that is a resistance phase if the stressful situation is no longer present and you can overcome the stress your heart and blood pressure will start to return to the pre-stressed level during this stage pre-stress level at the first prolonged level of high stress can cause disturbances in immune system digestive system uh, cardiovascular sleep and reproductive system you might have symptoms such as uh, bowel issues sleeplessness frustration poor concentration headache sadness and irritability prolonged stress that is not resolved in this stage mean in the second stage will go to the third stage that is exhaustion which is a disaster usually able to remove the stressor or uh, remove ourselves before exhaustion frequent exhaustion increase long term physiological and psychological damage a period of exhaustion is a chronic stress is a prolonged and constant feeling of stress that can negatively affect your health if it goes untreated it can be caused by everyday pressures maybe from the family or maybe from the work or by the traumatic traumatic uh, situations and during means experiencing stressor without relief drains <coughs> your physical emotional and mental resources to the point when your body is no longer able to cope with the stress exhaustion so gas gas general adaptation syndromes is a model of the stress experiences consisting of three stages on the left hand side you can say ability to cope ability to manage the stress that is high at the beginning stage alarm reactions if it is not if you are not going to cope up man means that if it is low during the period of time it's a time increasing in this way and that will be goes to the second stage which is known as resistance if still here that you are not going back to the first stage then this stress level will go to the next one because ability to cope will be low lower and it will goes to the third stage that is the last stage exhaustion and over a period of time you will see there will be ability to cope with the stress will be very less or minimum now what will be the consequences of distress first is a physiological body tension headaches muscle pain cardiovascular disease heart attack stroke some form of cancer and if you talk about the psychological job dissatisfaction moodiness and depress if behavior lower job performance poor decision making increased workplace accidents and aggressive behavior if the behavior is going to change then definitely the productivity will go down more accidents that will occur in the workplace now workplace stressors four most common workplace stressors are organizational constraints that interfere with the performance and lack of control and lack of resources and work overload this is from the organizational side this is from the employer side this is from the company side right so this is the most common workplace stressor number one is the organizational problem organizational constraints obstacles second is interpersonal conflict so in that is interfere with the goals 
whatever the goal they they want they want to achieve that goal so there is some interference in that goal so it means the other behavior that will be threatening including psychological and sexual harassment the third kind of stressor is the work overload more hours not 8 hours maybe 12 hours job or intensive work L lot of work is there on the next day you have to complete it a lots of target mostly you can see in the bank's job if there are a lot of target the people they they are not able to cope up with that situation this is a stressful situation low task control worse when are responsible but have a limited control individual uh, differences in stress people experiences a less stress or less negative stress outcome when they are better physical health when they do exercise their lifestyle is good they feel less stress right doing exercise the yoga in the morning just spending a couple of minutes maybe half an hour right that that is really really beneficial and appropriate stress coping strategies can be adopted seeking support from others if you are intense talk to the people and reframe the stressor in the positive light personality lower neuroticism and higher extroversion means uh, interact with others and degree of positive thinking is extroversion positive self concept mean high esteem and self efficacy and more confident right in this ways the stress can be managed so managing work related stress so first of all remove the stressors and withdraw from the stressor if there is a stress just go away for a couple of minutes or so change stress perceptions we are just uh, a human being and we we think a lot our view point is that our perception towards a particular task that if i do this one there will be a lot of stress on me controlled stress consequences if it is in your hand and receive social support talk to your boss colleague so first is remove the stressor assigning employee to job that match their skills and preferences first of all from the organization side appoint that particular guy for the particular job so in this case there will be a very very good uh, sense of uh, belongingness from the both of side from the employer as well as employee reducing workplace noise and having a complaint system there should be a proper complaint system and taking the corrective action quickly so that will reduce and remove the stressors giving employees more control over the work process and work life integration initiative for example pers uh, personal leave benefits personal leave benefits like we have uh, five sick leaves these days like so in canada so this is this is a uh, mandatory for all organizations if the person that want to get leave that would be paid leave for them so this rule is implemented uh, this year or last year uh, remote work and the rules to separate work from the non work second stressor like withdraw from the stressor that is a uh, permanently or temporarily permanently mean transferred to job <coughs> with the better fit and uh, temporarily that go for vacations or holiday or sabbatical or a game room change stress perception improve self concept so for the self for the perception no one is going to change that you have to control by yourself but you should know how to do that personal goal setting you just go to personal goal setting uh, set your goals and modify them or maybe humor laughing controlled stress consequences of physical exercise meditation or wellness programs in employee assistance programs all are very important to control the stresses receive social support need help There's, the human is a, is a social animal right talk to the people if you are in that situation 